Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some childhood crush romances. So this is more so childhood crush and like teenage crush romances. In all of these books, one of the one or both of the characters in the couple had a crush on the other when they were a kid or when they were a teenager. And of course, childhood crush like, I mean that in the most innocent way possible, just putting a warning out there, obviously. So I have a wide range of romances today. We have contemporary, a paranormal, historical, fantasy. So let's get started. The first one I'd love to mention is a new adult one. So less hot and heavy, you know, um, but um, the romance I feel like is very beautiful. This is Come Back to Me by Bela Gray. The little tagline on the top here even like says this. It says, at 11, Jessa first met Kit Ryan at 14, her crush began and now she's fallen in love. So like almost every single one of these books, the crush happens when they are younger in age, but then when they grow up, like I feel like there's like a time jump where they grow up and their feelings are finally reciprocated, you know? Or in a few of these books, they both had a crush on each other, you know? Anyway, um, this one is the romance between Jessa and Kit. This one's a little bit forbidden because Kit is Jessa's brother's best friend. So this is a brother's best friend romance. I think Jessa and Kit have a little bit of a age difference, a few year age difference between the two. At the beginning of this book, Jessa, I believe, is 16 and um, Kit just turned 18 along with her brother and they immediately enlist. So they go off to war together. This does like jump, like Jessa is not 16 for the majority of this book. But Jessa definitely had a crush on Kit for quite a few years. This one gets very emotional at times because there is a true running for familial loss and um, Kit is not really dealing well with that as well as Jessa, like they both lost somebody very close to them. Um, and they kind of also use each other to find solace in their grief at the same time. So I just really loved this new adult romance and is one that I just have fond memories of that I read in high school. Fire in You by Jennifer L. Armitrout is one of my favorite contemporary romances that not a lot of people know about because not a lot of people I feel like read JLA's contemporary romances, but man, this one is so, good and so underhyped. Uh, another book where the first line describes the childhood crush. So it, is that, so it says, Jillian's whole world was destroyed in the span of a few hours. The same night her childhood love, Brock the Beast, Mitchell broke her heart. Her life was irrevocably altered. This is an age gap romance. So growing up, Jillian was the daughter to a man who was kind of like the manager or the coach to like really successful MMA fighters. And so she was around those athletes a lot in her life and so one of her dad's uh clients is Brock and there is a large age difference between the two I think Brock is closer to her dad's age than Jillian um and so growing up she had this huge crush on him and I think at the beginning of this book when she's a little bit younger in age still of age but a little bit younger um she kind of like confesses her feelings and he immediately shoots her down and so there's a time and then her life is irrevocably changed by other instances that happened that night other than just that. And they haven't spoken to each other, I believe in like six years or something. And it jumps six years later. And I feel like, I think Jillian has to work with Brock in some way because now she works at her father's company. And he is shocked to see Jillian again. He finally like sees her in this new light. And normally I don't like romances like that where men, their eyes are finally open to what was right in front of them all along. But this is a very unique instance because Brock, when like six years ago, he very much viewed Jillian as like a kid, you know, um, even though she was of age. And so I feel like that time jump of six years when they haven't seen or spoken to each other in six years, that completely changes the game for him. Cause he's like, this is not a child, like she is a woman <laughs> and he can finally get to know her in the way that he wants, you know, um, in that romantic aspect. So. I really love this one, but this one has a lot of unrequited love aspects in the beginning. Oh, I really liked this one. This is Bottle Rocket by Erin McClellan. And this one is childhood crush or teenage, it's teenage crush um, with both characters. So it's also kind of like second chance. So the hero and the heroine had huge crushes on each other in high school. I don't know if they were dating exactly, but 
they had like fun together in some instances, but they were very much crushing on each other, okay? So her heroine has always lived in the small town that she grew up in. She's always lived there. She's kind of like lost with her life. She doesn't really know what she wants to do with her life. Um, so she's like, I'm gonna pick up a new hobby. I'm gonna go to this like a live model class, you know? And um, there she bumps into the guy that she was with in high school a few times. She had a huge crush on in high school. And now he's a very, very, very famous artist. And he's in town for a specific reason for a short amount of time. And they reconnect and things kind of spark between the two of them again. This one was so fun, like so fun. Um, this is a great like summer read if you're really wanting to get in the summer spirit. Because <laughs> this is one of her like holiday novellas that are like loosely set around a specific holiday in the year. So this one's loosely set around the 4th of July. But man, this one had me blushing, blush, blushing. Like it's hard. It was hard to read this one in public. Like I don't recommend reading this one in public. Like your face will be flaming red <laughs> the entire time you're reading it. Misadventures on the Night Shift by Lauren Rowe is more of a unrequited crush because the heroine was crushing on the hero when she was a kid because he was famous. Lucas Ford is our hero and he is a rock star. So Abby, our heroine, is grown up now. She has her own job. She goes to college. She works the night shift at this hotel, the front desk. And um, Lucas Ford, Lucas, ends up staying at this hotel for a little bit to get a change of scenery to write new songs. Hopefully a change of scenery will help him. And so once he meets Abby, who is the first person in a while to kind of like put him in his place because I think at the beginning of this book he's smoking a cigarette in the lobby and that is a no-no obviously and she literally like takes it out of his mouth and stomps on it after he ignores her and she's at first mortified she's like oh my gosh I just did that to my childhood rock star crush like oh my gosh um but Lucas is totally like "Ooh, who is this woman who stood up to me like what and she is now like his muse so he asks her to come up to his room a lot and um, just like talk so he can get like inspiration for his music. So a few times in this book, like Abby says like, childhood Abby would be screaming right now <laughs> if she knew what we were doing in this hotel room with our, with, with Lucas Ford. It was really cute and really sweet at time. And uh, I think this was the first like Lauren Rowe book I read and I definitely need to read more because this one was super entertaining. Next I have Dark Sky by Cressley Cole. This is one of the books in the Immortals After Dark series. It's personally one of my favorites because it's a childhood friends to enemies to lovers. Um, and when they're kids, they both had like little innocent crushes on each other, you know? Um, and so they were both heartbroken when they became enemies. Our two main characters in here, Thronos and Lanthe, um, they are part of this paranormal world filled with lore creatures. Lanthe is a sorceress, I believe, and Thronos is this type of, paranormal creature that has wings. Um, and actually there are two paranormal species are at war with each other. Like they, they're enemies, sworn enemies, like their people are. Um, but when they're kids, they end up like meeting each other and um, like sneaking off together to hang out and play and stuff. And then from a very early on age, like Thronos like has this sense that like when he grows up, like Lanthe is his mate. This series has a lot of fate and mate elements in there. So Thronos knows like Lanthe is endgame, <laughs> even when he's like a young boy. But then something happens in this book where both of them betray the other person at a certain age. Like I want to say like around the age of like 12 or something like that. And um, they are sworn enemies and Lanthe has been running from this man for years, years, eons. Like they've been running from him because he has been chasing her to get revenge on what she did to him. And so finally, this book is about him catching Lanthe and um, kidnapping her basically and them finally getting together even though they hate each other, okay? They can't help but be totally into each other and want each other, but they hate each other. They feel so betrayed by the other person. This one has a lot of interesting elements to it and had me on the edge of my seat the entire time I was reading it. I adore this book. A fantasy romance that I have is The Fake King's Curse by Jamie Schlosser. This one is kind of like both characters have like childhood crushes on each other. This is the romance between Kyrian and Quinn. This one's really interesting because it's a fantasy romance, but a portion of this book takes place in our world on Earth. So Kyrian is actually Fae. At the beginning of this book, our heroine and him, I believe they're the same age, I think like 11 or 12. And the heroine lives on this large property that has like a creek or a river running through it. And while she's playing out in the fields, she sees this boy like drowning in the river. She goes and saves him and it just happens to be Kyrian. And he's actually a fae who accidentally came through a portal in his fae world and plop landed in Earth, uh, in this river. And from that point on, Kyrian and Quinn are like best 
friends, but it's a little bit complicated because Kyrian comes from this fantasy land where time works differently. So for Quinn, she gets to see Kyrian every single day on earth, but Kyrian only gets to see Quinn once a year. So one year in this fantasy world is one day on earth. So every day Quinn sees Kyrian, he has aged a whole year. And so every single day, her entire life, she has always seen Kyrian. Kyrian has always been there. And so by the time uh, Quinn is like 19, when the story really takes off in here, Kyrian is hundreds of years old. And so Quinn is 19 and she goes to Kyrian and is like, hey, you're not gonna be seeing me for quite a while because I have to go off to college. And he's like, uh, that is not happening. I'm not gonna wait like a hundred years to see you again. And so he takes her back to his fantasy world, like basically like kidnaps her, takes her back to his fantasy world. There's fated mates involved. There's curses involved in here. Both of them growing up like were best friends, but then when they got older in age, like they were falling for each other. If you want like a really good fantasy romance that's really underhyped, you gotta, you gotta pick this one up. An added bonus is he has wings like Resand. okay? I'll just put that there. <laughs> Another fantasy romance is A Touch of Stone and Snow by Mila Vane. And this is the case where both characters like had like childhood crushes on each other. Lizen and Arax in here, they grew up in the same village. And ever since they were kids, like they had this instinct, this knowledge that this is end game. Like this is the person, their best friend, like they're gonna be with them for the rest of their life. Like they already know this. So they have this crush on each other throughout their whole lives, basically. Um, when Lizen and Arax are older in age, um, I think Lizen goes to help this specific like battle. Like she takes place in this battle and she is the only sole survivor in the entire battle. And her village sees this as a sign that she is evil and should be cast out. And so she gets cast out of the village and Arax a couple of months or a year later goes to find her um, to find Lizen, his best friend, but then also so she can help him with a certain task he's been assigned by the village. I love Friends to Lovers. This is one of my favorite Friends to Lovers romances. And the childhood crush, like it stems from, their Friends to Lovers stems from them being kids and knowing every single aspect of each other's lives and like knowing who this person is in their entirety, their entire lives. And I, I adore them so much. Next I have historical. So first is Again the Magic by Lisa Kleypas. This is more of a teenage, teenage love, teenage crush romance. This is a romance between Aileen and McKenna. Aileen is a lady. She is a high lady in society. And so because of her station, she's supposed to marry a guy of the same station or even of a higher one, but she ends up falling for her estate's stable boy named McKenna um, when they're teenagers. Like they are full on in love with each other. There is a crush aspect in here because like you see them crushing on each other at first and then it grows into love when they're teenagers. Um, but the it's more of a teenage love you know? Um, anyway, so her father hears wind of this romance and he basically threatens Aileen and is like, if you don't cut this off with this man, I will have him basically unalived. Like you have to get him to leave um, because you are not marrying that man. And so to save the love of her life, she basically breaks his heart and he goes off to America and thinks everything that Aileen told him is true, that she doesn't love him, that she lied to him, that she wants nothing to do with him. It's years later, they are both grown in age and then specifically McKenna has grown in wealth. He made a name for himself in America and has come back to England to seek retribution on what Aileen did to him. He wants vengeance. Aileen is trying to keep this secret of what she did to him because she doesn't want to break his heart all over again. And it's just, this book has so much heart and soul to it. There's a reason why it's some people's favorite book of all time. It's because it's completely epic. This romance is so sweepingly romantic and um, it it's epic. It's truly epic. Next I have Seduce Me at Sunrise by Lisa Kleypas. Um, This is the second book in the Hathaway series and it is the romance between Kev and Wynne. Wynne is a part of the Hathaway family. She is one of the many sisters in the Hathaway family and Kev is kind of like the family's adoptive son. Um, so Wynne's father, um, when they were like kids, ended up saving this Romani boy um, who I think was like starving in a ditch somewhere and takes him home and nurses him back to health. And he's never really left his fam their family ever since. Um, he's very grateful for her father for saving his life basically and just falls in love with all of these siblings in the whole family and then specifically Wynne. Ever since he was a young boy, Right when he saw Wynne, he knew that this woman is 
going to be his whole world. Um, so growing up, both Wen and Kev had crushes on each other, like childhood crushes. But then when they grow up, things get a little bit more complicated because Kev does not believe he is worthy enough to receive Wen's love. Um, and there's a little bit of a time jump because Wen um, is going through some health issues and she goes off to seek better care somewhere else. And this is her coming back after going to see many specialists and a doctor specifically and um, them kind of realizing like they cannot live without each other. This is another sweepingly romantic epic romance. Like Lisa Kleypas knows how to write, knows how to write like epic, epic, memorable romances. And the last book that I'd love to mention today is The Ice Duchess by Tracy Sumner. And this is a romance between Georgiana and Dexter. If you love a good nerdy hero, you gotta read about Dexter. He is so cute. He um, is like a paleontologist. I loved him, okay? <laughs> so uh, Georgiana and Dexter were like knew each other and were friends because Georgiana used to have a brother named Anthony. He recently passed away. Growing up, both Georgiana and Dexter had like innocent little kid crushes on each other. Um, but then because of everything with Anthony, like things kind of go a little bit distant. Like they, get, they distance themselves from each other because of her brother dying. Um, and then Georgiana ends up marrying or gets in an arranged marriage, like forced to marry this old, horrible man. And he just recently passed, she's now a widow. Um, and Georgiana and Dexter kind of bump into each other again at this ball, they haven't seen each other in years. This short little historical romance is about them kind of like rekindling things, even though Georgiana has like sworn to never marry again. Um, but she just can't help it because Dexter, is Dexter is Dexter, okay? <laughs> this one is such a good historical little novella. I know Tracy Sumner is kind of like slept on, so please read this one. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some childhood crush romances. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me. What emoji are we gonna do? Let's do any fruit emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.